Hello my friends and welcome back to the second day show and this one is episode 9 I know the last thumbnail did say episode 9 but there was a mix up between episodes but this one is actually the ninth episode of the second day show and as usual for these nine episodes I am firstly joined by Lakitia hello my friend good to be back and welcome Kyle great to be here with both of you as always indeed and as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, we've got some more interesting scene descriptions. Importantly, a really interesting scenes from a, it seems like an important Numenorian character that we're going to get into. And it isn't just, and you'll see in a second, it's quite specific to a certain type of thing. As I can uh, probably, dis I know that sounds like an awful description, but it's quite niche. So I think it leads to lots of um, interesting speculation and possibilities. And we also have a confirmed actor. Well, of course, you can't say confirmed, but pretty bang on. So I think without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing is that one of the main sets slash massive set pieces. So this was built. It's a massive built set piece at Kamui Film Studio, Kamui Film Studios is quote Loader's Boat and all the way already from there where what have we heard before from here of course Loader and um, I'm not sure Kyle or Lakit here before we move on did any of you want to read the description of um, Loader? Um, yeah sure so We've got a description from Loda's character from Knighted Media. Uh, it was casting breakdowns they released, I think, a couple of years ago. So Loda was marked as a series regular male, uh, age 47 to 58, Caucasian. Um, and his character was said to be a series regular, up to six options. So this was said to be a fantastic role for a strong leading male actor in his late 40s or 50s. Loda is an earthy, deep, solid man. Um, he doesn't give his feelings away easily. Physically strong and fit, powerful. His appearance is Caucasian uh, to be determined. Mm -hmm, indeed, thank you for that. And I think an important thing to take away is the first few um, words he said is a main character. So this does seem like a very important character for the show. And first of all, Loder's boat. We can, of course, and go delve into that in a minute. But now here's the next part. It is a big bow. Well, this is the actual um, loader's bow. That's actually, before I continue, that's the code name given for it. So that's how we were able to find out. That's what the probably the extras, the production members, the directors would all say, let's now film on loader's bow. I know that probably was never said, but um, that is what, that's how you would use it. But anyways, on to the next one. It is a big bow created from scratch and while in action, it is on a movable gimbal with cannons, full sail riggings, and a golden trim, and is said to be a quite fancy looking boat. Um, uh, Kyle, I think the first thing to take away from this description, well, firstly, it is a freely made boat by Amazon, and secondly, um, I think the golden trim, and it's quite fancy looking boat, so it must be to someone who has quite, is quite rich. Yeah, for sure. I think it's to me that that description reads peak Numenor, right? And it's uh, it's cool that we're, you know, if this is a main set, we're obviously going to be spending a lot of time on on the sea, which is which is really nice to hear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, indeed. And I think um, another thing is I'll show on screen right now is what a movable gimbal is, if you're not sure what that is. And this is from the Netflix geeked um, Vikings um, behind the scenes trailer. It shows this boat. And it is on just going up and down on this thing. And that's how it looks like it's on the waves in the sea, essentially, as well. And adding on to that, it is presumed that the person who owns it seems to have great wealth and power. So that's just an observation so as well. So that narrows it down a bit more. And I think, um, like it, you know, I'm putting you a bit on the spot, but I think you'd like to reveal this next bit, which is quite interesting stuff around um, the deadline confirmation and um, the loader thing. Do you want to go for that one? Um, yeah, sure. So according to deadline, Lloyd Owen has been cast in the role of Loda. Um, so the code name for the boat is Loda's Boat. 
Uh, so first thing here to note is that Loda is presumably a code name, like we've talked about several other code names that they've, they've been using. Um, now, Deadline, the article, has specifically mentioned that uh, Lloyd Owen is, is Loda, and this article has been retweeted by Lord of the Rings on Prime Twitter account. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that this strictly confirms that Lloyd Owen is Loda, but I'd say, you know, it's pretty likely. I think we can, you know, maybe it gives us some idea who could be portraying him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I think a lot of the time with the deadline, etc., Amazon just sends them a press release to read out. So maybe it is presuming that in that press release of the actors, it does say that Lloyd Owen is playing Lloyd. That could be a possibility, which means that is confirmed then. But of course, we have to speculate on that part. So that means that Lloyd Owen's character is the owner and presumably captain of this ship. So between room and fact just just spread between there right now. The fact is that Lloyd Owen is Loder and the fact is that this is Loder's ship. But the thing is, is he the captain? I think it's safe to say to make that educated guess that it, it does make sense that it would be his ship if it's named after him and that's the code name for it. But I think just maybe I think, should we just give, before we move on to the next bit, just a roundup of what this means so far? What do you think, Carl? Yeah, I think uh, it's also uh, reasonable to mention the uh, the idea we had talked about a couple of weeks ago where there was a uh, a Numenorean general, right, with this, this golden uh, chest piece on his armor, and I think that uh, this could tie in really well to that. Mm -hmm. That is actually a quite interesting thing, because, yeah, that massive that thing from that Numenor in general a link between that would be quite interesting and, I, and the fact that this um is so whoever Lloyd Owen is playing whichever character is playing in Numenor would presumably be quite wealthy and rich and that's another yeah. interesting thing because then when we go into the character speculation I think that really does um lead into that as well but I think that's the description of the actor, the character, the code name, how what the ship looks like. Now let's get into some scenes. And can I just can I just also sorry before we move on, can I just mention Loda's audition as well? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because, go for it. because we do have some information regarding that. So Redanian Intelligence posted um like a breakdown of the of the of the audition tapes. Uh, back in 2019 and uh, we we get Loda's dialogue with his daughter so it, from that scene like we get one short scene and we get like the impression that he gets along very well with his daughter but has a bit of a strained relationship with his a bit more independent son and there's also talk of a stowaway that Loda saved but we never get to learn more about her so of course this is an audition scene so we can't take yeah. this for better mm -hmm. But still, it could give us some idea. So he could potentially have like a daughter and a son with a bit of more problematic relationship to him. Yeah. So that that could maybe narrow it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I Who think knows? I think an interesting thing you mentioned like that was it captured the stowaway? Was it or retrieved? Yeah, that's right. That could link with just going out to sea, going to some other place for maybe a cruise in love, getting someone and bringing mm -hmm. them back. Yeah. That fits quite well. Yeah. And actually, um, Lakiti, you've actually um for reminding something that was I forgot to do, which is that going back to that loader um character description. So it's a strong leading male character in his late forties to fifties, and um, forgot Lakitia. Like, how old is Lloyd Owen? Uh he's fifty-five. 50. As far as yep. I could think. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that, that fits matches. that. Yep, matches. Was he forty forty-five or fifty-five? Fifty-five. He's fifty-five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Load is an earthy, deep, solid. Doesn't give his feelings away easy. That I think, of course, beforehand. Um, of course, we're thinking, yeah, that matches now, knowing that he's a captain, uh, well, presumably captain of a ship, but I think that is what you associate with a captain of the ship. They're not going to be these weak, just, um, like, minimal mm. individuals, and they wouldn't be a captain of the ship, and this quite looks like expensive, wealthy ship. And also physically strong and fit, 
powerful. So physically strong and strip, sit. <laughs> okay, that's a really tongue twister. Physically strong and fit, of course, when okay. you're on um, a ship, there's going to, is going to be a lot of work. And of course, for mm. said reasons. And then powerful, either way, maybe that's further goes on to him being the captain because it's a powerful thing for him. But who knows, that is just one of the character descriptions. But as we go up here, now we're going to get into some scenes of um, the ship. And one, well, including Lloyd's ship and presumably Lloyd Owen and with him being his character, Loder. So one of the scenes seemed like the boat was sailing on a voyage between two places. Those two places are currently unknown. So this is more of like a... This is this is what it's just an observation, and there was a captain on the ship, presumably Loder, with two main slash important cast members as well, with a lot of extras as deckhands. So, that interesting with two main slash important cast members along with this Loder character. What do you think? Um, that could explain. Maybe are they? I think the first thing that comes to me is maybe they're taking someone or oh, important figures back to Numenor that could be a possibility maybe they've captured I don't uh, maybe uh, just a, a, a port town because you can't confirm which place time period etc but maybe they came from a port town some important village members uh, for example a main Guathur maybe they got like for example Nazni Boniadi we know that she's an important character maybe they got her and then and brought her back as well. So I think that's the main thing I can take from that with the two main slash reporting cast members as well. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a, I'd say that's a pretty standard seafaring scene. Not much to go on, really. Like, mm -hmm. it could be anything. It could be like a military expedition. It could be, like you said, just transporting, you know, persons of interest. It could be a holiday sailing trip for all mm -hmm. we know. Um, but yeah, it does sound interesting, and I'm curious who the two other important cast members and, of course, their characters are. Yeah, and I think there's been, you know, we've talked about a few things where it might indicate that it's militaristic of, you know, of some nature, or if it's, you know, exploration, mm -hmm. or it's cool that it's the, the possibilities at this point are kind of open. Or it could be a diplomatic mission as well, maybe. Totally. Some, yeah, of indeed. Course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think the main thing... I think yeah, go on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to say that I think, <laughs> given the fact that we know very little about the Second Age, like we know very little about the you know goings of important characters, I could see really important Elven characters making you know trips maybe to Numenor as well. I know mm. it's not anywhere in in text, but uh, I think something like that could happen as well. I don't know an Elven. You know, ambassador sent to Numenor and then Loda escorting them back or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who I think knows? so too. And I like the idea of, of there being consistent communication there between, you know, Numenor and, and the elves in general. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, well, depending on when the show takes place, of course. So if it's mm. around, I don't know, Aldarion's time, then there probably wouldn't be too many, you know, trips <laughs> <laughs> on the side of elves. True, uh, but, but then, then again, you have you know you have the Kingsmen and you have the the faithful, right? Like maybe there's maybe there's something going on there as well. Oh yeah, well for sure. If it's later Second Age, of mm, course. If it's yeah. Elendil's time, then by all means, I could see that you know taking like more journeys mm -hmm. between Middle Earth and Numenor. Um, yeah, I, I like yeah, yeah, I like the thoughts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah, it's open ended, so it, it really could be yeah. a number of of people, which is cool. Indeed, and I think we'll get really delve deep into that in a bit. But of course, that was all on the side of speculation. So no, nothing, um, none of that really is um, is confirmed at all. But is it really fun to just speculate on that though? Because this really does give a big opportunity for us to say what character, what scenes could be happening. And now getting into more scene descriptions well i think this is the same scene i'm I'm presuming the deck hands were moving ropes and sails as water cannons cannons were blasting at the ship with the ship moving up and down in the gimbal like he was on the ocean so water cannons um what this is um is basically when you sh any show um for example like pirates of the caribbean you've got um of course the viking show as well usually a lot of ships not all of it is going to be filmed on the actual sea and then you have to 
if you want to recreate what it would be like to be in the middle of the ocean, middle of the sea, and just being up and down on these crashing waves, I think um, having, I think that's why these water cannons are in use, because of course in the sea, when it's, when it's in the rocky period, there's lightning, there's lots of water going to be splashing at the, uh, the ships, the, the ships will be going up and down, like maybe it's about to sink, we've seen those, so many scenes, of, scenes like that in movies before, so these water cannons are just blasting water at the ship to seem like it's maybe, maybe it's having a rocky experience as well, but that's standard when you have, when you have made your own ship and it's not on the sea, so that makes Make sense as well so yeah anything you guys want to add on that or should we move on it looks like you know the ship is actually gonna see some action mm -hmm. so maybe maybe it's an actual scene where i don't know maybe it's a battle scene although i doubt it i'd say you know there it's probably just a traveling scene but i think there will be some some scenes of importance taking place on the on the boat so that's really that's exciting i mean we haven't mm -hmm. seen practically any seaside action in in the the trilogies so yeah oh, this exactly. is really it'll, it'll be nice to see something yeah. new and i mean you know that's that's a huge part of of numenorean culture so yeah exactly Very important. Mm -hmm. being on the open waters indeed i think yeah. that will be really um, interesting to see and mm -hmm. moving on the captain it looked that there was a captain on the ship but of course there's always going to be which we are presuming because it's loader's ship that the captain is loader of course there could be the chance maybe loader's back in numenor and even though this is loader's ship there's another captain but then loader's off i don't know maybe in some court politics thing but i think at this time it it that like loader is the, well, well lloyd owen is the captain of the ship well he would walk down the boat from the steer from well from uh, is it the steer i think that's what it is to um to sail the um, boats and was checking on the deck hands and looking out to sea a lot so i think mm, looking that, for umo I <laughs> that that would be <laughs> that would be really interesting and i was thinking uh, just a side note that could be i know people say this is a side of that people say um of course that picture of Tyrion and novella and and um the the debate around each of the vela mm. on screen etc and I think mm -hmm. my answer would be no, but with Umo, I think there is more of a chance with having um, maybe showing him on screen. But that's just really side story, um, a side note. But I think that <laughs> would, um, I think it would be easy than showing, let's say, Manwe, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Unless you want to spend all your budget on CGI eagles. But um, <laughs> that's um, besides the point. But back to this. So, yeah, it seems like this description seems like they're more on a voyage. They're like, you know, the captains come down, Lloyd Owens come down looking out to sea and checking mm. on the deckhand. So do you think that's what we can take away from that? But then, of course, maybe in a point of the, the journey or the voyage from one place to another, they maybe it goes through a nice period then on a harder period. What do you guys think? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. I think a bit we haven't meant uh, touched upon yet is from where to where could it be? Maybe, but of course, the be the most likely thing is of course either from Numenor to Middle Earth or the coastlines of the Middle Earth, or vice versa. And I think this mm, is a yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good way to. In fact, Swegwe, uh, that's me being a lyrical genius right there, um, <laughs> into who could Loda Lloyd Owen's character be? Because this is a really, as I said earlier, we can really hone in on this because it's such a niche character. It's not some random, not random, but it's not like a, one of the kings of Numenor. It's not like a prince, for example, etc., etc. There is only, there are quite a few words but it's only a certain amount of characters this could be unless of course it is may is of course an amazon original character but this is a main character as well we have to remember that this captain is a main character so yeah i think so and also they are quite wealthy and rich and the boat looks quite um like it does own it's owned to someone who is wealthy so um i think I, i'll move this part on to you um you two now so I think the five we've mentioned here is Elendil, Kiriata, Aldarion, Alpharazon, etc. 
So where do we, should we should we start off with um well chronologically Eldarion that's the earliest I think um that we can go. So what do you guys mm. um think on that? Could this does this seem like Eldarion? I I'd say it could be if not for Lotus audition like mm, mm-hmm. good point. I don't think that anything I mean I know that the audition tapes are misleading a little bit and they're not yeah. conveying what you know truly happens in a given scene but still I don't think any of the context from his audition would fit um the character. So I would I vote no. <laughs> yeah, no. That's a good that's actually that's actually a really good point. I um I know whenever we talk about Numenorians and, and, and ships, and I mean, even we talked about, uh, when we first talked about the guilds, you know, the first thing that came to mind for me was the guild adventures, and, and to me, it's the, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. It's the first thing that comes to mind is Eldarion, but, you know, I, I like that, you know, it could be a number of, of others, you know, and, yeah. and, and that that will be I a, would a say... big part of it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I would okay. just I would just point out another thing because his character is marked as late 40s 50s. Mm. I think that's a little old for, mm, for good Aldarian. good point. Yep. That, that's a he's, because, it's, you yeah, know, good point. Yeah, he's longer lived than his wife is. So mm-hmm. I would say that the actor would have to be a bit younger. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's actually really good um cool. And I think just just for the scenario that if you want to think that it could be the Real links you can put together. Someone wealthy, someone looks like, and it doesn't seem like this is a fleet per se, unless of course this is a ship that's going to be like times fifty or times a hundred on the sea, of course. And I think mm. it does seem like more of a boat than a full-on ship. But of course, CGI, etc. They made sneak show the main deck hands and main bit of yep. the ship, so we can't confirm or deny whether it's just a boat or just a ship. But it does seem like quite a um. How do you call it? Like it's quite it seems like quite a, sh- a ship for a wealthy person, Aldarion, who is of course during his voyages a prince. Um, mm-hmm. he would of With course the gold, the gold yeah, trim, gold trim as well. Like that, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that link that back again to that general from the previous yeah. things, and um, yeah, just and then of course and then inheriting that, for example, Tarminal, the the father as well, who's their king. Mm-hmm of um Numenor and I think the fact that some of it does seem like a journey as well but I think we can I think it's safe to say probably no on this one and then one of the most revealing things which Lakitia amazingly pointed out is the age and I don't think we'd mm-hmm. be seeing a 55 <laughs> year old um yeah Eldarion yeah, yeah. <laughs> my yeah. mind just um, <laughs> blank but no you're good yeah that's what we're here for yeah <laughs> So now, um, moving on to the next one, that could it possibly is, of course, Kiriata. And um, I, I, then uh, who wants to start off with this? I think there's a bit more to take from this. Yeah, I think this one is much more likely, actually. Uh, so he would be someone of great oh. importance. You know, he was, you know, a commander sent by Tarminaster to aid the elves in the war against Sauron. And he was the one, you know, to bring the decisive manpower to eventually win the war. So I'd say he would be a pretty big character. And I think age-wise, he could fit. I mean, Mm. as far as I know, we don't have any specific information on what Kiriatur's age would be at that point. Um, So yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, and I I think that's more realistic than... Eldarion, but another thing that comes to mind is the two, um, the no, apparently it seems like the two important main cast members along with Loda mm. on the ship, and maybe unless they are the new Minori generals coming up Guathlo, the River Guathlo to save the day, mm. and except from that, I don't think I think that's maybe the only uh, maybe drawback to maybe being Kiriata, but it does. Mm-hmm. I think everyone mostly presumes that this is going to be set in the mid second age. So I think yeah. Kiriata... I will say the only the only other thing I would point to would be that the description of the general, you know, that we talked about a few weeks ago, I think out of all of them here, Kiriator would, would fit that the most for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Me and maybe it is the same general. Maybe mm. um, um, Lloyd Owen is this um, important Numenor in general. Oh, Kiriata, in fact, as well. So yeah, Could be. and you all remember the army march through the town, but actually, yeah, but actually, maybe problem that it seems like it's the army, and mm. 
this seems like it has 12 15 deck hands on board so um yeah very yeah very you know, yeah oh yeah that's actually that's one most important thing we've um missed that I didn't see like there's any real soldiers on set on this yeah. ship so maybe that heavily takes away from potentially it being Kiriata Kiriata in fact but now let's jump a thousand years and let's go <laughs> to um Elendil. So this is the first one. What do you think about this, Lakitia? Can I actually, um, before we go on to Elendil, I would, as as another candidate, I would also name Amandil possibly. Uh, so mm, Elendil's father. Yep. He we he actually made the one sea voyage that was one of the most famous you know sea voyages in Numenorean history when he sailed west towards Valinor. Um, I don't think we know much about him, um, but I think he could be a candidate as well. It makes sense that you know the the actor would be slightly more mature. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, indeed, so yeah. That would be mm -hmm. And I think and the. Yeah, that is really a important, and um, well, that is actually a, a, an interesting omission that um, you've made. But yeah, and I think maybe that's why um, in the first two episodes you might be seeing Tyrion, presumably Valinor, because maybe later on in the season we are going to go back there again, but this time with Amandil as well. Mm. So maybe that could link. Um, that could be an interesting link. So yeah, we can't exclude him either. And it's basically, and I think likewise, before we go into Lendil, the same could be said about Isildur as well. Mm. So yeah, Isildur could be in the same scenario as Anarion, as mm. well, Anarion, Am Amandil as well. Oh. I always yeah. ask, well, actually, I'm not sure if this was the last episode or Council of Fans, but I always get, no, this was on um, the Clueless Girls, uh, not Clueless, <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry, the Clueless <laughs> Fan Girls, um, <laughs> um, video I always get Amandil and um, Anari and them two mixed up all the time and there's like a thousand mm. year difference but I think <laughs> um, <laughs> I felt bad I really called it the clueless girl um, <laughs> so yeah in the Helen's channels um, go check that out as well um, but I think in the middle of those two however is Elendil and who wants to take this one away? Could this, could this, um, from what we, from the scenes we've we've heard of, from the character description from Lori Doran, could Elendil fit quite well? I think so. Yeah, for sure. I think he even looks a little bit like the actor from the trilogy. Not that that's going to be a determining factor or anything, but I think I think it fits Elendil very very well. Actually, I this would be my best bet. Yeah. So um... I, I'm on, on the same exact page and even like the character description stuff. I know that can apply to a lot of people, but um, I really like this as, as a Lendl personally. Mm -hmm. And then that adds on to the two main cast members as well. Who are with them. Maybe mm -hmm. that's maybe, uh, maybe yeah. we could presume one of them is a sealed door. And I think I really, um, and I don't think we're saying this is the flight of the faithful because um, I think um, that wouldn't be in the first season. And no. um, and also the description, he's just looking out to see. It doesn't really seem like he's just, he's like, oh, let's go check on the um, deckhands while well, my home mm. kingdom and the king that's been around for 3,000 years has just toppled into the sea. Yeah. So I think it yeah. seems a bit <laughs> too leisurely um, for yeah, that. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. It does have certain implications, though. So if we take the audition a bit more, you know, literally, then that would mean that he's given a daughter as well. So mm -hmm. as far as I know, there's no daughter ever mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in text, like any sister of Isildur's. Um, but then again, of course, you know, there would be other I, children that yeah, would I, have probably... Mm -hmm. They just weren't re recorded, yeah. Yeah, and I think that was specifically mentioned in the nature of Middle Earth. That was just yeah. yes, yes. That there yes. are other children, you know, to these characters. They're just not mentioned. If they haven't um, done anything of significance, then then they wouldn't be recorded, which makes sense. You know, that's exactly. that's how history works. Yeah, there's only so much space. You know, <laughs> you yeah. can't just fill it with all the you know children and everybody <laughs> that's who right. ever lived. That's right. So, so, but I think yeah, I think it could fit, and that would also give another implication because. You know, in his audition, it's mentioned that his relationship with his son is maybe a bit troubled. Mm. So that could be an interesting, you know, Dynamic. little information about yeah. what Isildur would be like then. So, yeah. yeah, and I think um, 
yeah, the nature middler thing does really fit that quite well with having. Of course, they're going to know that in so many times um throughout the show, there's going to be made up mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, yeah. siblings as yeah. well, children, in fact, as well. So yeah, yeah. and yeah, I think Elendil and this the, that leaked um uh thing by Redain Intelligence that scene, I think it fits him the best. And the final one, I think, was Farazon. Mm. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? I don't think it fits. <laughs> I think the description given on Knighted Media casting breakdowns, like that he is earthy, deep, solid, I don't mm. think that applies yeah. to Farazon at all. Yeah, good point. I, yeah, I think other than the character description, it, it could work. But yeah, I mm-hmm. think you're right. The character description doesn't it doesn't feel Farazon to me, personally. Yeah, neither does the audition for that Yeah, matter. yes, that's right. So yeah, I don't I don't think um he's the best possible candidate, but who knows? Could be as I am, well. I am excited to see Farazon though. I am I'm looking forward to that for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean I bet that he's gonna be like if he appears because we still don't know precisely which you know which era we're looking at. Yeah, here. I hope eventually, you know, we we do want to see the you know the downfall of Numenor and stuff like that. So I hope eventually yeah. we'll we'll see that at some point, whether it's in this series, if it's at the end of this series, or if it's in a spinoff show. You know, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that on screen. Yeah, of course, and of course, Farazon really fits the the gray character prototype that's been really yes. popular you know in yes. fantasy recently very well so mm-hmm. i think he's gonna be a really charismatic character so yeah good looking point forward to him as well me too yeah indeed and i think we have covered all the main characters that we could think it can be and for me it's between um really it is between elendil and kiriata and do you want to guys mm. do you guys want to say yours it's the same for me. I mean, I, I still, I would prefer it if earlier seasons would be more forging-centered, so Kiriator takes the cake for me. Um, but Elendil sounds more plausible, given what we've learned so far, so. Yeah, I'm I'm of of the same mind. I'm, I'm feeling less and less like we're going to see a lot of the forging, so uh, Elendil is, would be my pick for sure. Indeed, and if we do a quick just overview of everything it is one of the main sets last slet set pieces not slet pieces at kimu <laughs> film studios is loader's boat it's a big boat created from scratch and while in action is on a movable gimbal with cannons full sail riggings and a golden trim and it seems like this boat is quite a fancy looking boat and i think that takes away from it maybe being a full like a military ship maybe as well then it's presumed yeah. that the person who owns it seems to have great wealth and power then according to deadline lloyd owen is cast as a role of loader and the code name is loader's bow therefore we can presume that that this actor who's all the character later mentioned in the scenes is loader so lloyd owen and then he was it seems like this is a voyage between two places and these two places we can cannot confirm and we also um cannot confirm the two main slash important cast members as well but we know there were some um deck hands on the set and also moving up and down he was moving up and down the ship as well or boat in fact looking out to sea maybe insinuating that this is a voyage of sorts then I think we we went through the character description as well, and then all the potential characters it could be. So I think I'll move on to now final thoughts. I'll start off with you, Kai. What do you make of this? It's exciting because it's you know it's like I said several times. It's it's open ended, and it could really be at any point during you know the the existence of of Numenor, and and that's exciting that you know we we could be anywhere, and uh, I love that one way or the other we're getting we're getting the sea and you know we're getting exploration and 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 military and and drama so i'm i'm quite looking forward to even just that part alone is sounds quite exciting i'm excited yeah same same it for me it's like we've talked about because we haven't (laughs) we haven't seen much um as far as you know sea voyages go so far in in the yeah. middle earth saga so this is really really exciting 
a bit mm-hmm. refreshing and, and you know we, we there, there could be parallels between this and and the trilogy so it, it'll yeah, be nice to see also, something completely different yeah i think this this could be a way you know to to make like to be really distinct from the trilogy as well yes. you know instead yeah. of all the long walking journeys we now have yeah seafaring long journeys. long seafaring journeys yeah, yeah there you go yeah. <laughs> land to sea that i love that yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, indeed and I think one thing we haven't mentioned that much is potentially this going up the, the river Guathlo, but I doubt it from mm. the descriptions as well. And importantly, this is a main character. This is like one of probably the three to five main characters of the show and seems like it is um, just looks like it's going to have an important part to play. And seems I think we can confirm it's new Minorian as well without a doubt but i think this is time to wrap up so firstly thank you carl has been a really really fun episode today yeah thanks again uh, always glad to chat with you guys mm-hmm. and likewise to you as well like it here hey thanks for having me this this was fun really looking forward to all the seafaring action mm-hmm, indeed and please um you guys let me know um in the comments below what you think who you think this character is what where they could be sailing from to could it be um one of the port cities that are bad that are bad as well londe as well so so many things that you can take away and speculate from this but thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it please like and subscribe but until the next video my friends goodbye <laughs>